everybody. Sorry I'm a couple of minutes behind tonight. Um, just work got busy and I'm a little bit late. But uh, hey, let's see here. Make sure I have a full head here. Um, let me close my door really quick. Hang on. A little bit late. Okay, I just like to shut my door so that when my husband comes upstairs after his workout, he can be free to move about the house and not worry about making too much noise. So, um, okay, so how is everybody doing tonight? Um, are you guys getting ready for Halloween? Hey, Robin. Hey, Brandy. I'm glad that you guys both could join us tonight. Um, if the response to my um, post was any indication, it looks like we're going to have a good turnout tonight. Put my computer on mute one of these days. I'm going to remember to do that ahead of time. I've got um, three fun things in store for you tonight. I've got two cards and a project. Uh, I'm kind of excited about the project that I've got going and eager to hear what you guys think of it. I think you're going to love it. Um, so let's go ahead and get this camera turned around so I can remind you about some upcoming events and um, then we'll get started on all of our stuff. What do you think? No, Robin, you didn't hear a TV. What you heard actually was um, I didn't have my computer on mute, and so you were hearing me live and then hearing me in the background too because I was playing on my computer, but um, that has been resolved. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this turned around here. Okay, let's see here. I've just about got everything lined up. Okay. All right. Yeah, you didn't want to hear me in um, stereo there, Robin. Okay. So I do want to remind anybody who's here tonight or watching this later um, if you are in the Spokane area, I am doing a Christmas crafting event on Saturday, November 6th. That's going to be at the Longhorn Valley Barbecue. It's going to be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Thank you, Robin. Um, because I've been wearing my overalls for all of my recordings. Hey, Kathy. Um, I noticed what had happened is I noticed one day that like the last three videos I'd done, I was wearing my overalls because I love them and I wear them all the time. And so I thought, you know what, maybe that's just my thing. So um, I started wearing my overalls for every video. And I thought, if I'm going to do this, I need to start investing in some different ones. Hi, Sheena. Welcome. Um, so I bought myself a pink pair because I'm a pink girl. And um, tonight my husband told me that I looked like Mario's sister. And I said, no, I'm Princess Peach. And he said, no, she wears a dress. You look like Mario's sister. So, so it is, I guess. Um, I love the pink too, Robin. I'm, like I said, I'm a pink girl, everything pink. If I could, if I could do everything pink, I would. Um, so anyway, this Christmas crafting event, if you are in the Spokane area, um, I'm doing this on November 6th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Spokane Valley Longhorn Barbecue. We're going to make eight projects. Three of them will be cards and five will be um, things that you can either use as gifts or decor or tags, um, a variety of things like that. There is a $35 supply fee um, to attend, but if you go to uh, this stamphappenings.ticketleap.com slash Christmas, which is really long to remember, um, you can buy the tickets directly there, or if you just come to my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash stamphappenings, you'll see the ad for the event and through that you can just click on the link to purchase tickets. Um, tickets must be registered and paid for by November 1st to make sure I have enough um, time to do the supplies, get the supplies all ready for everyone. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun so I would love to see you there if you can join us. Also I want to remind everybody about Paper Pumpkin. Um, Paper Pumpkin is our subscription service that once a month you get a great little kit. Um, hi Elaine, it's nice to see you, welcome. Uh, it's a little kit that comes with everything that you need inside to make 
whatever the project of the month is. So everything but a pair of scissors. You would need a pair of scissors. Um, but it comes with a little stampin' spot, which is an ink pad that's about one inch by one inch, and it's a different color every month, so you won't get the same ones. Um, and then you get any of the adhesives that you need, any of the um, cardstock or card bases or anything like that. It all comes in the kit. So they also make a great gift for somebody. If you know a crafter or, um, you know, maybe even someone who likes the idea of crafting, but isn't as hardcore into it to have all the stamps and the supplies and that kind of thing, this is a great gift for them and you can buy it for one month or you can buy it in a subscription of three, six, or 12 months. And of course, each of those increments, there's a little bit more of a price break. So um, the next one is gonna be these little gift holders that come with um, little food safe cello bags inside. So if you wanted to put a food treat in your boxes, you could. We know that one looks like this cute little snowman. I haven't heard definitively what the other two are. I heard that one might be a Santa, or I'm sorry, not a Santa, a tree. And I can't remember what I heard the other one might be, but I haven't heard for sure. So part of the fun will be finding out. And you have until November 10th to subscribe to this. And you can do that right on my website, heathersides.stampinup.net. So let's go ahead and get going with our projects we have. I've got some fun stuff in store. I'm going to leave the project one for last, um, just because uh, I think the other two will go a little quicker. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this cute little card. And um, this is a fun fold, sort of, I don't know what you would call it, though. And so I'm going to show you how I made that. And to make it, let me show you what I used. I used the Frosted Gingerbread Stamp Set as well as the Gingerbread Dies that go together. There is a suite for all of this called Peppermint and Gingerbread, and it is so cute. It's got paper, and there's um, coordinating ribbon, too, I think, and um, I'd have to look in the catalog. Let's see here if I can find it really quickly. Ah, I opened up right to it. So on the first page you see here, um, there's just some sample cards there, but it also has the red crinkly ribbon. Um, there's some craft paper, uh, some special little die pieces that you can use to embellish. I guess they're embellishments, not die pieces. The paper is so cute, um, but there's a lot you can do with this. Tonight we're, we're gonna use, like I said, the frosted gingerbread stamps and the gingerbread dies. And then I also brought in this Christmas to remember stamp set just because I liked the greeting in it. And we're gonna use that as well. So let's go ahead and get started. Move some of this stuff I don't need out of the way. The first thing we've got here is a piece of cardstock, and or the this is the Balmy blue. I always want to call it bliss blue because that was a blue that we carried that was this shade We're very similar to this shade and we carried it like a hundred years ago And I still always want to call it bliss blue. Anyway, what I did is I took a full sheet of cardstock I cut it in half lengthwise. So this sheet was originally um, four and a quarter by 11 then what I did is I went ahead and I scored it at five and a half because that's where I'm going to want the fold of my card. Then I took my trimmer and I trimmed off. You can see it was like this. I trimmed off two and three quarters of a piece. That's just half of this one side of the card. So two and three quarters. And what we're going to do is we're going to flip it around and stamp on it. So it's a great way to conserve paper. Um, then I also have some of our white glitter ribbon. This stuff is so pretty, you guys. Um, it's just got some opalescent sparkles in it, and if you haven't used it yet, um, I really recommend it because even though it's nice and wintry because of the white and the sparkle, you really could use it year-round, so it's, it's a very nice ribbon. So then I also have a piece of Highland Heather, and it is two and seven eighths by four and one eighth, or I'm sorry, 
four and three eighths. So it's just slightly bigger than this balmy blue piece. And then a piece that's slightly smaller, about a quarter of an inch smaller actually. So this piece is two and a half by three, I have to think this through, two and a half by four. Yes, two and a half by four because the blue is four and a quarter. Then I have a piece here that's four by five and a quarter. This is gonna go on the inside of our card. And then this is just a white scrap to stamp our snowflakes. Let's go ahead and get that ball rolling. So the first stamp I've got here is my snowflake stamp. I have it mounted on the acrylic already. And let's move these guys out of the way. We're gonna use three colors for the snowflakes. I've got gorgeous grape, balmy blue, and highland heather. We're gonna stamp one snowflake in each color. I wanna do the balmy blue last because we're gonna use it for something else as well. Okay. Hey, Becky, welcome. Robin, what were you saying about packages? So I'm just gonna ink these up and stamp them on my white cardstock. Now you do need to, um, hey, Talina, welcome. I'm just getting started. All you missed were the announcements that you already know about, so, um, so you're good. Okay. I'm, I'm cleaning my stamp between each one because they are different colors and I don't want to mix the ink on my ink pad and I don't really want muddled colors either. Um, I do want them to be distinctly different. If you are new to me or new to Stampin' Up, you might not be familiar with our Stampin' Chamois. This is, this is the best cleaner. I love mine. Um, it's a kind of a foam. It reminds me of neoprene, and it cleans the stamps really nicely. Okay, let's close these ones because I'm done with these colors. And now I do want, I think I need to clean this a little more. I'm still seeing some purple on there. Okay, now I'm gonna do the blue, balmy blue. Oh, so I'm on your big TV again. Oh, very nice. I do not, I would not wanna see myself in big. Okay. Now, I don't know why I just cleaned it off because I'm gonna do some more stamping in the balmy blue. I'm going to take the piece that's our card base. I'm going to go ahead and, where's my scrap paper here? I'm going to go ahead and fold it here. I'm going to use my, let me move this back. I'm going to use my bone folder to crease the edge. Make sure you get a nice sharp crease. And then I'm going to take some scrap paper and put it in there like that so that I don't end up stamping on the inside of my card. And I'm just going to stamp a bunch of snowflakes all over the or all over this section of the card. I'm not really putting them in any specific spots, just trying to kind of fill up the space. Okay, I think that's good. Now what I'm gonna do is clean off my stamp because now. I'm done stamping that, but while we're stamping, let's go ahead and um, do the message, the sentiment that's on the front too. So I'm gonna take that small piece of white that we had, and right about the middle of it, I think I'm gonna stamp the message I chose, says friends like you make this season special. My husband, every time I show him my cards, he's got to have some smart aleck response to it um, where he acts like he thinks the card was made for him. And so if it says happy birthday, he tells me, but it's not my birthday and that kind of thing. So I showed him this one the other night and he said, but I thought we were more than friends. I said, well, we're working on that. Okay, so I just stamped that there. It's a 
a little crooked, but that's okay. Now clean off my stem. Okay. I am in Spokane, Tony. Where is everybody, by the way? Everybody that's here tonight, Talina, I know you're in Everett, obviously. Um, where's everybody else? Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Now what we need to do is we need to cut out these snowflakes. And normally I try to have my die cutting done ahead of time for you guys, but um, I wanted to be able to stamp these and then cut them out for you. I didn't want it to just be a show of watch me piece things together. So oh, let's put that snow or put that ink pad away. You know what kind of trouble I can get into with my ink pads open. Okay, now if you have never seen or used our stamp and cut and emboss machine, we have two. We have a larger one, and then this is our small one. This is great because it's desk size, and most of our stamps or actually most of our dies, I mean, fit in it. There are a few that are larger and won't fit into it, and for that you need the big one. But the little one will do most everything. I'm just cutting these pieces of paper down so that they fit through widthwise. But this little guy is, um, it's only $60. It's a really good deal and I use my dies all the time. Now another trick, ugh, another trick to using your dies, when you have something like this where you're cutting it out versus um, if I say that I just wanted this shape, I wasn't cutting out something I had stamped, I was just cutting out the shape, you wouldn't need to do this. But because I am cutting out something specific where there are lines to it. Um, I wanna make sure that my die stays in place as I run it through. So I used a little um, post-it tag just to hold it, hold it down. And then you just reel it through like that. And your die comes out perfect. So let's do the other ones really quickly. Hello, Tammy. Pennsylvania, wow, Elaine, that's, and Wisconsin for Ann, Brandy's in Nashville, Sheena's in Indiana. Cincinnati, I think I knew Cincinnati because I think you, I asked you about that once before, Robin. Okay. Let's see. Where are you at, Tammy? I know you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, but where are you at? Yeah, Robin, my husband thinks he's a real um, comedian coming up with things like, you know, being more than friends. Um, where? Oh, you're, well, that's right, because I know that you guys live really close, so you go to Patty's and stamp with her. So here's our other one, and then we're gonna do our last one right now. Wait, get this on here where I want it, and then I'm gonna stick it down. Okay, it's so funny, I'm so used to using the big one that when I use this little one, it's so lightweight that it's like, am I doing this right? Anybody else have that happen? If they have both of them? Okay, so let's put, wait a second here. This needs to go in its container. Oh, I know why it was out, because that's the one I was using. So now I'm gonna just put this away before pieces get lost. And we have, we're done with our um, 
cut and emboss machine. So now I'll just move it out of the way. It just folds right up. It's very nice. Okay, now we're going to put together our card. Turn off my heater. This page or this piece of cardstock has kind of an edge sticking up from where I cut it. So I'm just using my bone folder to get rid of that little edge. Okay, now get my Seal Plus. This is my adhesive of choice for most things, but for those of you who've been watching me for a while, you know that um, I use a lot of different adhesives on different projects, just depending what the need is. Now I'm gonna just stick this right inside here. Like I said, this is the inside of my card. I guess that's why I said inside, right? Okay, line it up. I just wanna make sure that my margins um, match pretty well. And you know what, if your margins are slightly off, that's okay. I mean, it's still a handmade card. It's just kind of funny. Oh, well. okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three pieces and I'm going to get them all glued together. So is anybody doing anything fun for Halloween? I love it when adults get dressed up because I just think the adult creativity in costumes is so much fun. And I love seeing what they come up with. So are any of you guys doing anything fun? So as you can see right now, I'm just gluing all these pieces together. And then, you know, I think it might be easier if I tie my bow. My bow. You're old and boring, Robin. Yeah, I kind of am too. That's why I live vicariously through others. Oh, that'll be fun, Brandy. Are you going to dress him? Are you going to dress up to take him out or just let him be dressed up? The only time I ever dressed up when I went out with my kids um, is when I was pregnant with my daughter and my brother-in-law was staying with us for a little while and he insisted that I needed to, I had this like polar fleece sort of jacket and um, it was kind of an orangey-ish, yellowish. And so he insisted on taking black cardstock and making a jack-o'-lantern face on my belly. So that's the closest I ever got to, to uh, dressing up when I went out with my kids. Okay, I just don't like the direction this bow is going. So I, I'm going to flip it over and see if it works a little better going this way. If not, I'll just retie it, which I probably should have done. That probably would have been easier in the first place, but you know, whatever. Because I kind of want it to be at a little bit of a jaunty angle. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. I'm gonna trim that down a little bit. We still may end up trimming it some more. Well, no, I'll just trim it where we where I know I want it. But okay, make this book just a teeny bit smaller. Okay, I'm feeling better now. Now what I want to do is take. Ah, come here. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it to my card. Now, the thing that's important to remember is you don't wanna put glue on the entire back of this because if you do, you're gonna glue your card shut. So only put adhesive about halfway. And then stick it on here. There we go. And what I want to do is I kind of wanted to have my bow so it was right in the corner of my card, sort of like that. Wouldn't you know what? I don't like how loose that is, so I'm just going to retie it anyway after all that.
fortunately I can tie pretty quick bows. What did you try to do, Tammy? I didn't notice you fumbling with anything. Oh, Sheena, that is awesome. Sheena says she was a 1920s flapper in a um, costume contest at a, at a crafting event she was at this last weekend. What were some of the other costumes, some of the really good ones? I love hearing about good Halloween costumes. Come on, Brandy, if the whole family's dressing up, you have to too. You know, it is hard, Talina, when you have a dog that wants to bark at every, if they bark whenever neighbor, or, um, people come to the door. And um, my dog that died last January, for Halloween for years, I didn't, I, I either, if I had somebody with me that wanted to pass out the candy, then I just went and I hid in a different room with the dog with the door shut so, so that he didn't get all worked up every time the doorbell rang. If um, nobody was home, then I just turned out the lights. Okay, I've got to quit in with that. Okay, so next step is I'm just going to glue some of these on. Now, this one, I wanted it to be um, flat on there. I'm going to lift up the other ones with Stampin' Dimensionals, but this one, I wanted it to be down. And the reason I wanted to do that is because then it makes the other ones stand out even more when they're popped up. Okay, so I'm gonna put some dimensionals now on this one. Let me figure out where I want my dimensionals. Okay. The regular size dimensionals fit just right in the um in this particular die cut but it probably would be better to use the miniature if you have them i kind of go crazy with dimensionals and then i'm going to use my take your pick tool to take the backs off this just pulls them off nice and quick and then i don't have them everywhere i can just pull them all off my tool at once and Throw them away. Oh, there's a glue dot stuck on there. Okay, now stick this one down. I think I want to sneak attack one of those under there. I like to use a lot of dimensionals just because I don't like it when the pieces sag. I have enough in my life that's saggy already. I don't want my cards being saggy too. Okay, so there's one. Now let's get the other one. And make sure when you've used up all of the dimensionals on your sheet, remember that these edge pieces work they're dimensionals too, so, you know, don't just throw them away. Definitely, definitely reuse them or use them. Okay, so it looks like I want to put here and here and here. Now I am, oh, I think I want to put one under that, that little edge there. Put 
Okay, so we're just about done. And actually, if, if that's all we did to our card, this would be fine. But I do like my sparkle. So let's add some rhinestone basic jewels. These, there's two sizes on the sheet, and I'm using the bigger ones. And I'm just putting them right there in the center of my snowflakes. And then now I'm taking a couple small ones just because I want to have some on this little piece here. Right there. And there we go. So there's our first card. And I forgot to grab an envelope to do an envelope. Um, but what we could do is just take these little snowflakes and stamp them all over the back, the flap of the envelope, um, which I will save because I do want to make sure we have enough time tonight for um, enough time for the project that I'm going to show you guys. Hi, Cynthia. How are you? Okay, okay, got that lined up right. Okay, now let's put away a couple things and get going on our next card. I tried to keep the two cards fairly simple tonight um, because, because I was trying to leave a little time for that project. So those of you who are in our Love to Stamp group, this may look familiar to you. We did this card yesterday in a mystery stamping um, thing in, in our stamping up group of demonstrators and um, I really liked how it turned out so I thought I would use it tonight. What it is is it's actually a gift card holder. Got a belly band around the card to hold it shut and then you just put your little gift card right in here in this little flap and I was going to put one in there for you so you could see and space it. Oh I know what I can do. See the gift card just fits right in there like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I have a sheet of basic white cardstock. It is three and a quarter inches by 11 inches. Then I scored it at, oh, where, what were my measurements? I was gonna write it down and I forgot. La 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 la. What did I do with my ruler? Okay, I scored it at three and three quarters, and then again at eight and a half. Well, actually it looks more like, yeah, but it looks like it's about eight and three quarters. So three and three quarters and eight and three quarters is where it's scored. And to be honest, if you don't have those exact measurements for the scoring, it really doesn't matter that there's, the only reason it matters is because the, um, you do wanna make sure the one piece comes over longer than the other. You don't want them to meet in the middle. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fold this, use my bone folder to get nice sharp creases. Now a little trick I will tell you is, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece of our designer series paper. This is from our Eden's, Eden's Garden set um, that, that will be available to customers on November 2nd. If you wanna get it before that, um, which at this point is really only a few days, but I, if you join my team, it was made available for demonstrators to purchase this month. So um, anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this piece of the designer series paper onto the basic white. But what I found is if I glue it down like this and then try to fold it, the card just doesn't lay quite right. Um, it kind of buckles a little bit and it just, if it doesn't bother you, it's no big deal, but it bothers me. So what I did is I put a little bit of adhesive here on one end, then Let's see, put it on there. Check my margins. 
And now I'm gonna fold this piece. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and put some of my adhesive down on this section. I've got this piece folded. Now I'm gonna lay this piece down on it. I've got it kind of crooked here. So I've got it folded. Now I'm going to lay this down to cover the section that we just put the adhesive on. Now I'm gonna put adhesive on the last section. And this just makes it so that all the paper lays a little flatter if you do it this way. Now I should have folded it before I stuck it down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully peel it back up. Now fold it over. And do my edges again. Okay, so this is our card. Whoops. This is our card. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some tear and tape. When you are making gift card holders, you really wanna use something like tear and tape to hold the little flap in place and that re the reason is it puts a lot of tension on the wherever it's adhered together um, when you take the card in and when you push it in or pull it out or whatever and chances are you may do that multiple times so if you use a nice strong adhesive then you don't have to worry about it coming undone so I just use my tear and tape some people recommend using the Stampin' Seal Plus for this. Um, I still feel this is a little stronger, so I prefer this. So once I get it on there, I just go over it a little bit with my phone folder. Then I take my Take Your Pick tool and take that release tape off. And I'm just gonna stick it there to the inside of my card. And now our gift card will slide right in there in that little pocket we just made. So there's the card itself. I'm gonna set it aside. Looks like I got a little too much adhesive on there. If you purchase my Adhesive Essentials Kit, you will get one of these adhesive erasers. And these are really nice because then when you get too much um, adhesive on your piece. You can kind of play with it and get it off. There we go. Now it's gone. Okay, so then I'm going to take, I have a piece of our gold foil. This strip is just a half an inch wide and it's about 10 inches long, I think. Um, it was just a scrap that I had. And it's okay if, if um, your band doesn't quite meet in the middle because we're gonna cover it up anyway. So what I do is I put it around like that, fold it, then take it off and line it up just to make sure it's straight and not all cattywampus. Then put it back, fold this side over Remember, when you make a belly band, you want it tight enough that it's not going to just slide right off, but you don't want it so tight that it's hard for the person to slide it off and on. So it's kind of a delicate balance there, I guess. Now, what I did for this belly band is I cut out, I used the, let me show you here. I used the Eden dies. I should show you this set. This is the Eden's Garden set. Um, these are the stamps that it comes with. 
and then these are the dies that you can get little frames and um, we're going we used this one right here or I used this one and I cut a little bit out of um, the soft succulent and what we're gonna do is actually I think I want to wait to put it on and I'll show you why we won't put it on the band quite yet but let's go ahead and make it and get it ready I have this little tag that I just got from the pretty pillow box dies which you've seen me use before I use them quite a bit and I've got the stamp here and this one says, I love this one, this sentiment. My heart is tied to yours. Tug if you need anything. And we're going to use the soft succulent. Are we going to use soft? No, I decided to use the evening evergreen. It's sometimes with um, sentiments, you want to have a little bit darker ink just because it'll stand out a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm just going to line this up. Oh, that's nice and crooked. Um, what I could do is just flip it over. And see which one I like best. And now that one's got kind of a little ink booger. So what do you think, the ink booger or crooked? I think I'm going to keep the ink burger. Okay, so now I'm going to just use my stamp and seal plus glue this onto this piece here. Just center it. I fiddled with this for the longest time last night. I don't know what my deal was, but I could not get it to center if my life depended on it. Then what I'm gonna do is take a little bit. I have our, this is our gold trim. Comes in gold and silver. And you know, when you first get it, it's kind of, it's rolled up in a tiny little, on a reel. And then it kind of takes on that shape and it's a little tough to work with. So just take your bone folder Go like this as if you're curling ribbon just do it lightly and you can straighten it out so it's kind of like starting all over and I'm just making a tiny little bow pull that nice and tight make my little bunny ears a little bit smaller because this is a, a small little space where it's gonna go now what I want to do is I want to trim the tails off of this. And I'm going to use a glue dot. Glue dots are great for sticking down ribbon. Ribbon doesn't, ribbon, twine, um, that kind of stuff doesn't tend to like regular adhesive all that well. Textured things don't like regular adhesive all that well. So. Um, for those kind of things, a little glue dot works great. And I'm just going to put it right here in this corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting it on here. But I want to make sure it lines up well on my card here. Let's see. Let's, we can do this now, I think. So I put my belly band on. And I'm gonna put adhesive at both ends. Remember, our, our piece of gold doesn't meet in the middle, so um, we don't wanna necessarily have adhesive go all the way across. So I'm just doing it at the ends here. Looks like I got a little bit of adhesive through here. Not a big deal, I just poke it through and then flip it over. Yeah, it's kind of stuck on there. I may have to leave it, but that's okay. Not a biggie. Oh, I got it off. Hey, me. Okay. Now I'm going to line this up where I want it. My belly band. And then I'm going to center this piece on this flap of the card. 
I could center it on the middle of the card. If, if, you, if that's where you like it, you can do that too. I just kind of like centering it on this piece because now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, I have a little square of white. This was just a little scrap. Oh, there it is. And a slightly bigger piece of gold that I'm gonna layer onto the gold. I'm going to use this um, kind of flower, leafy, bushy stamp. And I'm going to use the soft succulent ink. And I'm just gonna stamp it right on there. There we go. And this, it doesn't necessarily ink everywhere. It's not designed to. It's designed to kind of give it that watercolory look, so that's okay. Um, you can always try re-inking it again and trying it again, and you might get a little better coverage, but overall that is what you're going to get. Okay, so put this ink pad away. Stick this down on the gold. And I'm going to stick this down on my card. So I'm centering it on the flap piece, not on, I'm not centering it on the card, on the whole card. I'm just centering it on this flap. And now when I put my belly band on, it's gonna slide right over there. And there we go. What do you think? Oh, wait, wait, there's more. I wanna put a few of the little gems. These are the gilded gems. Just give it a little bit more bling. It's trying to fall off. Okay, and let's put one right here. So there we go, there's your little gift card. And you can do these, you know, with any designer series paper and make them for any occasion. Um, I know that a lot of gift cards get given at Christmas time. You could use one of our super adorable Christmas papers. Um, anything really and this will fit in a standard envelope because it's only um, five I think it's five and a half inches Is it five and a half? no it's five inches this way so it will fit in um, a regular envelope and let me check it might even fit in one of our note card envelopes oh yeah because our note card envelopes are three and a half by five so it looks like it, it would fit in here. It might be a little tight with the belly band, but you could do that or you could do a regular envelope. So there's that card I've got for you guys. Are you guys ready for the project? Thanks, Sheena. Okay, who's ready for the project? Okay, got that put together there. Get some stuff out of the way here. Okie dokie. Now, this next project, I'm gonna show you the one I made and then the one as a sample and then the one we're gonna make tonight is a little bit different just because I wanted to get you thinking outside the box a little bit, I guess. Um, I have these amazing hand lotions that I absolutely love and Brandy who's on here tonight actually sells them. If you're looking for a good hand lotion, um, send me a message separately and I would be happy to give you Brandy's information because I love this hand lotion. But anyway, I made this little holder and you can't see it really well from this angle, um, but it stands up on its own. You can kind of see from the top how it stands up on its own. Um, and from the side, how it fits in there. 
And then what I've done is the back side of it, this is a belly band, and this is a card that opens up, so you could write whatever message you wanted to inside. So it's both the card and the gift all in one. So let's get cracking on this one, on the one we're gonna make tonight. I chose to make this one a little more Christmassy using our Whimsical Trees set. Show you here, Whimsical Trees. I This is probably of all of our Christmas stuff, it's my favorite, um, probably because it's pink, first of all, but also um, I just, I like the whimsical side of things. I don't tend to be a super serious person and I like fun and glittery sparkly and this set is pretty and fun and glittery sparkly and I, I just love it. So these are the stamps. And you see you've got ornaments and trees and some holly there and um, some great little sentiments. You've got the dies. This comes with a lot of dies, you guys. You've got all different trees and um, ways that you can decorate the trees. You've also got, that cuts out the holly, um, a, a small tree. Those are little Christmas balls and stars to put to decorate the trees. And then the ornaments that you, that you stamp, you can then cut out. So this is really fantastic um, suite of products. Um, on this, I did also use the scalloped contours dies. Um, I use this one right here, and then the one just slightly smaller. I use this set a lot. This is very versatile. Um, it's almost a must have in your stamping assortment because, um, because you can use it on so many different cards. So absolutely, Sheena, this would be great gift for coworkers, Sunday school classes, somebody that you wanna give a little something to that you don't necessarily wanna spend a ton of money, but you just wanna give them a little something special. So what I've got here is this is our um, bl Blushing Bride cardstock, and this piece is three inches by 11 inches, and I scored it at five and a half. So we could fold it in half there. Now I'm just throwing stuff around. I have another piece, and I wrote down the score measurements of this one because I knew I wouldn't remember. The piece itself is three inches wide by eight and a half inches long, and I scored it here at a half an inch, and then at two inches, then at four and a half inches, and then at six inches. So um, those are all the different places that this will end up making the box that we're gonna use. And I need to grab the, another set of dies, hang on. The other set of dies I have, which is this one again, is another must have in your stamping um, assortment of products. This is the layering circles, and I love it because it's got so many different sizes. And yes, they are designed to nest on one another so that you've got a frame, um, but you can get a circle of just about any size. And that's really important when you're making a project like this because depending on the product that you buy to put in it, you want to do a circle that's going to fit. So what I did is, let me show you, I took these lotions that I had and I literally just took circles and thought, okay, what's going to fit? And this one was a little big. I found that when I cut with this one, there was so much wiggle room here that the lotion didn't really stay inside it. So I needed to go one size smaller with this one and it's a little smaller than what I would like but I liked this better than um, better than the way the big one was and I actually used nope not that one this little kind of ruffly edge one I don't know if you can see the ruffled edges um, because it was just slightly bigger so that's what I'm going to use on here so we're going to get out our cutting and embossing machine again. It's getting its use tonight. Now, you've got your half inch scored section, then there's a one and a half inch section, 
then there's a two and a half inch section. This is the one where you want to put your circle. So just remember, starting at the left, start with the half inch one and go to the two and a half inch one. You don't want to do the two and a half inch one that's on this end. So let's get all the little pieces here. There is not a lot of room for this to wiggle out of place. So I would, and what I am doing, I don't know if you can see this, um, I am trying to center it and then I'm gonna stick it down with a, with a, sticky tab thing to make sure it stays in place. Get my plates down. Okay, now move this out of the way. to do. I'm going to put my little die cut back so that I don't lose it. Okay, now this, I, I'm not going to use this tonight for anything, but what I want to point out is it's a great little circle with the little ruffled edges. Set it aside. You can use it on another card another time. Um, now let's go ahead, we're going to fold all of our edges. Now I'm going to take a bit of tearing tape. Again, this is something that it's because it's going to be bearing weight, I want to make sure that um, I've got a good adhesive on there. So that's why I'm using the tearing tape again. And I'm just putting it on that little section that's a half an inch. Press it down with my bone folder. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this together and you can see how it's making a box. Okay, it's just gonna be like that. And that's gonna be the base of my gift holder that I'll be able to set the lotion in. I've also seen these made with um, chapstick, little, little tiny ones um, with chapstick and, you know, any little, anything that comes in like a little bottle like that, you can, you can do. Now, the easiest way to fold this together is you could just manually try to figure out your square, make sure everything's lined up, but to be honest, that's kind of a pain. So what I do is I just fold this over like this and then line it up while it's still flat because then it'll form your form your box. I, I made this in such a way that then your fold will go on the bottom just so that it's not as visible. Now, let's get going on the card part, and I've got lots of parts here. Um, this is very simple to make, but the way I chose to decorate it ends up using a lot of pieces. So it's not difficult. Don't be misled to think it's difficult just because there's a lot of pieces here. So first I want to take this white one. And by the way, the three pieces that I have of the designer series paper, and this is the paper that goes with the Whimsical Trees set. This started as one strip that was three inches by 12 inches. Um, and that's all I had to use. So you could get four of these out of one sheet of designer series paper. I cut one to be five and a quarter inches long, and it's gonna be on the front of our card. I cut one that is, uh, how long is this? I think it, uh, four inches. And it's going to be the other side where our box is. And then I have a little piece here. This is just three quarters of an inch. And I, we're gonna glue that down on the inside of our card. And it left me with another strip that is this three inches wide by three quarters of an inch. So if you wanted to use it all, you could put another one at the top, at the top of this white piece that goes inside your card if you wanted. 
There we go. Just glue that down. And then trying to decide if I want to put a message inside here. Let's go ahead and put a message in. Okay, we're going to put in the one that says, May, love of this, May the love of the season warm your home and fill your heart. Boop. And for that, we're going to... I want to use the pink, so let me grab my blushing bride. We're... There we go. Oh, poo. So I've got that little yucky thing on there. So I'll go back later and um, do something to fix that. But um, I don't want to take your time while I cut another piece and redo it. So I'll fix it later. Okay. Put my ink pad away. And we're going to... Normally we would glue this down like this right here to the inside of our card. You know, I'll do it a little bit just so you get the full effect. They really do charge a lot for stuff like this, Brandy. You're absolutely right. And, you know, it takes... Let me think here. You could get two or three out of a sheet of the colored cardstock, four out of the designer series paper. So it really would not cost, doesn't cost a lot to make them. Okay, so now this is the front of the card part. So I wanna stick this on there. Sorry, I keep pulling it closer to myself. I love the colors in this paper. There's some really pretty ones and it's got lots of shine. There's one that's like kind of a shiny opalescent stripes. It's just gorgeous. Okay. Then what I did is I cut one of those. This is one of the pieces that I cut out of the scalloped contours. And then I cut a little white piece to put on here. And we're just gonna, take the little trees. Let's see where all my trees went. I think one of my trees went under here. It did. Okay. The trees like this, these tall skinny ones, come in two sizes. There's taller ones that are tinier trees and shorter ones that are bigger trees. So on this piece, I wanted to use the bigger trees. And what I'm going to do, this piece is going to go this direction on the paper. So what I chose to do is I'm going to use my liquid glue on this. Get the glue booger off. Yes, Regina, this uh, video will be on YouTube after every live that I do. And I do these every Wednesday at 6 p.m., I do um, upload them to YouTube. And I'm trying to, sometimes it takes a little while for the glue to get started because it's got like a little glue booger in there. I need to get a needle in here. Whoa, okay, something just spit out, so now it's gonna work. Okay. And I decided I wanted my pink one right, right in the middle. And by the way, the colors that I used were the Mossy Meadow, the Blushing Bride, and, and the Mint Macaron. These are the colors that are in this um, designer series paper.
And I want these to be varying heights just to give it a little bit of a interest, I guess. Oop. Isn't that funny, Regina? Whenever I um, watch videos like this and, and the person is at the beginning saying, oh, hi, Regina, hi, Talina, hi, you know, to everybody. Um, it reminds me of a show that used to be on TV when I was a kid called Romper Room. And um, it was, you know, for school-aged kids. And the lady at the beginning would say, she would just say names. I mean, you know how it is. She'd just go, I see Heather and I see Talina and I see Brandy. And boy, if you heard her call your name and she's, you know, at that age, you think that she really can see you. It was such a huge deal um, to know she'd called your name. Now, I did not put any adhesive on these little um, tree trunks because they're so skinny. I thought it would kind of make a mess. So I, I just didn't worry about them. Now we're gonna glue this down onto the mint macaron piece that we have there. Just kind of center it. You can see that the mint macaron piece has stitching. So I kind of centered it within the stitching. I'm not going to glue it directly onto my card because we're going to make a belly band and this is actually going to be on top of the belly band. So let's do our front piece now because it's going to go on the belly band too. And for this one, I'm going to use the little trees. And I was trying to decide if I wanted to Put them all the way across like this or if I want to kind of lump them together and I think I kind of do and then what I'll do is I'll take this stamp that says joy and put it right there so let me get ink on that or get that on a block this cute little a block you know what I'm gonna do first though I'm gonna do a little surgery on my stamp if this is painful for you to watch look away for a minute but sometimes these sometimes the sentiment stamps have this big amount of extra rubber around them and that's how you end up with the lines those little blobs like I got <clears throat> on the inside of the card here so I trim those off the key to this though is make sure you're just cutting the rubber don't cut the foam piece too because then your stamp will get out of balance, kind of out of whack, and it won't stamp right. Okay, so I'm gonna wait to stamp that till I have my trees on, but let's go ahead and get some glue on these guys. Oh, I guess it helps if you take the lid off. She was? I totally, Talina, I totally thought that it was just local to Spokane. I didn't realize that it was elsewhere too because I know it was filmed here in Spokane. At least they thought it was, maybe not if your sister was on it. Your sister's a celebrity. Then again, I'm easily impressed. So. So Regina, you remember Romper Room too. So it must not have been local to Spokane then. I always thought it was. Okay, so let's get this last tree on here. And now I'm gonna just trim these trunks off. There we go. And then let's, you know what I think I'm gonna do? I think I'm gonna stamp Joy three times. I'm gonna use the Mossy Meadow, the Blushing Bride. Do I have room? Yeah. 
I think I do. And mint macaroni. So, Okay, so there's one. Be sure to clean it off, especially going from that green to the pink. Clean it off. Do the last one. Yeah, that one's going off the edge a little bit, but that's okay. Now, let's go ahead and glue this piece on. And again, I'm just centering it on here. Now this piece, just so, just to remind you, is only going to show when the people take the lotion or whatever it is out of the out of the container because it's going to be in the way um, at first. So let's go ahead and start piecing this whole thing together. Oops, we for I forgot to stick this piece down. This is the piece that's gonna go on the front of the, it's the back side of the card, but it's going to be the front of the container. And it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom because that's gonna be covered up anyway. Now I'm gonna take this, and again, I'm going to use the um, tear and tape because I want a nice strong adhesive holding this in place. Your cat ate one of your dyes? Selena said her kitty did, her kitty chewed up one of her dyes. That's horrible. I mean, I suppose you could wait till it comes back out. But I doubt you want to go picking through the kitty litter for it. Okay, so now I've got this piece. I've, I've put my adhesive right here. The easiest way to lay this down, again, you could have it like this and try to line it up, and that's just kind of awkward. So lay it flat, then lay this piece over it. And now you have the container. The other reason why I wanted... Um, a belly band on here is because right now it just falls over but once you have the lotion in it that weights it down so it won't oh and I did too big of a hole on this one that's okay um, but this shows you kind of what happens if you're if the hole's too big it just falls out um, so you do want to make sure that the hole fits a little bit better but you can see how the back flap of the card just flaps open so by having a belly band it holds it all together. So what I did is I took a piece of the mint macaron and I wrapped it around. So make that first fold, make sure everything lines up. Then do the second fold. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of tear and tape. 
for your holiday crafting, whether you make this project or any others, I really recommend getting some tear and tape um, because most holiday crafting, well, a lot of holiday crafting does require adhesive and it's just so easy to use and it's nice and strong um, that you can use it in so many ways. I really recommend buying a roll of it. Okay, so there's our belly band. Make sure I didn't just make it too tight after I warned you guys about doing that. I made it a little too tight, so I'm just going to undo it. Tear and tape can be rather unforgiving, so you want to be careful. There we go. There, that's much better. Now, the thing that I found when I was making the belly band is if I lined it up to have this in the center, then it was up really high on this. So you have to decide, do you want the front centered or the back? And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put it there. Yeah. So now I'm going to take a little bit of adhesive here. And you can see this piece is not centered on the belly band. That's okay. That's fine. Um, I did want it centered left to right, though. <laughs> okay. So that's what the with the back side of the holder is going to look like. Remember, that's the front of your card. Then this piece is going to go this direction on the belly band. So put some adhesive on your belly band. And this piece is about three inches, so it's going to... How about if we put it right side up? There. Now I think I want to add a little extra sparkle. And I thought about putting some rhinestones on there, but I think that might be too much. So I'm going to take my Wink of Stella and just put some on my trees to make the trees a little sparkly. I don't know, can you see that on the TV? And I think I'll do it to these back ones too. So there we have, oh yeah, you can see it a little bit. So there we go. Oh, and I forgot to do the ribbon. Oops, how about if I get the right lid here? I did have some ribbon I was gonna put on here. I think I'm gonna leave it off though because I just think that I was gonna put it around down here, around the trees. But I think it's too much with the belly band. I would have needed to um, put the belly band lower so that it was on that. So I'm just going to leave it off this time around. But there you go. There's the... Let's see if I can... Since this is a little big, I can't really tip it over very well for you to see. But it looks like that when it's standing up. From the side, you can see it would stand up like that. And then when they go to open their card, take off the belly band, and there we go. So that is my project for you guys. Remember to check the size of your circles that you make before you die cut them so you don't end up like I did with, with a hole that's just too big. Um, all you gotta do is figure about how far down this um or how far up the container is going to come on the lotion or whatever it is that you use so that you put those circles through on the at the same depth to make sure you have the right size so there we have one now i don't know if you can see this very well but i have it what i've done is i've chosen to kind of set it back a little ways so it's at a little bit of an angle and then you can see that piece in the front a little bit better. 
So that's all the things we made tonight. Let's look at them again. Clean up my mess a little bit. Oh, I was like, I have one more piece I forgot. Stick this guy on. And I just put this on here on the front. There we go. That's better. So we've got the lotion. We've got the snowflake card. And then we also have the little gift card. What does everybody think? Thank you, Cynthia. Oh, I have to see what the idea was that that uh, Brandy's replying to. Yes, exactly, Talina. You could just make it wider and then put together a little gift set. That's an awesome idea. You could also do little rectangles and maybe put like hot cocoa or something like that in there. Or um, take one of our mini jam jars. Oh, let me look and see this. wonder if this hole fits. I would need a bigger hole. Well, this works okay. And there's a little jam jar. Put some body scrub or something like that in there, or, or candy. I'm always good for candy. Um, and put it in there. This is more of the paper from that same set, the Whimsical Trees. So there's a lot you could do with this, depending on the size of the hole, the, how wide you want to make it. But it's, you saw, they're very simple to make. So, um, Talina, I'm glad you love them. Cynthia, you're very welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, does anybody else have any questions? I want to give you a chance to, a moment to type those in if you do have questions so that I can answer them. But if you ask questions later on this, I'll get the message and I'll try to reply to you. You can also um, message me on Facebook here um, on my business site, which is uh, facebook.com slash stamp happenings. And then um, as I said earlier, I will also be uploading this to YouTube. So if you enjoyed what you saw tonight, um, as a favor to me, would you please uh, give me some likes and share this share this video with your friends. Um, you never know who might be interested. Maybe someone you don't even know is into crafting might like this, or they may just like, for example, the lotion idea um, for something for Christmas that they could do. So sharing my video really helps me a lot. Um, yes, Brandy. Brandy asked if the adhesive set is something that you can get from me directly. Yeah, let me show you the flyer for that. I have two kits that I offer. One is my must-have tool kit, and it's $45 plus shipping. It comes with a bone folder, paper snips, a take-your-pick tool, the piercing mat, and the chamois. You saw me use all of those tonight, so you can see um, that those, those are things I always get out as must-haves. Then the adhesives, I, I use all these different adhesives all the time. With this kit, oh, and also, with the must-have toolkit, you also get a zippered pouch to keep it all in. With the essential, the adhesive essentials kit, you get one um, thing of the stamp and seal. The cool thing about the stamp and seal is once you have used it all up, you just open it up, take this out, and you can buy just refills for it. You don't have to buy a whole new container. It also comes with the liquid multi-purpose glue, some stamp and dimensionals a package of our mini Stampin' Dimensionals, some tear and tape, some mini glue dots, and our silicone adhesive mat, which is really nice because adhesives don't stick to it. So when you're working with like liquid glue and things like that, you can use it on this mat and not worry about getting it all over your project, but then it's easy to clean off as well. It also comes with, a, with one of the adhesive erasers that I used earlier and a zippered pouch for your tools. If you are interested in ordering either of these kits, you just need to message me and then I can send you an invoice because I put them together and I put some things in there that are not necessarily Stampin' Up! pieces. Um, 
You can't order them from my website. You just need to let me know and we work it out. But if there are things that you want to order off of my website at heathersides.stampinup.net, I ask that you please use my host code. This helps me um, to be able to earn the free things that I like to give away to customers and um, drawings and door prizes and such. But if your order's over $150, don't use this host code because you're going to get some um, stamping rewards yourself and I want to make sure that you're the one who gets those if that's the case. So um, you can always visit my website, visit my Facebook page, my YouTube page. Um, my YouTube page is just youtube.com slash stamp happenings. My Pinterest page is pinterest.com slash stamp happenings. Um, so I would love to um, earn your business. Give me a chance to do that. Um, whether it's by contacting me directly or going to my website and if nothing else, please continue to watch my videos because I love sharing what I do. I don't see any other questions from anybody, so I'm going to say good night, have a great week, and I'll see you guys next Wednesday.